Hello everyone, it is 5-31-2012, Inventing Disorders for Drug Profits. Have you ever heard of the following mental disorders? Reading disorders, disruptive behavior disorder, disorder of written expression, mathematics disorder, caffeine, intoxication disorder, nicotine withdrawal disorder, non-compliance with treatment disorder, or physical abuse of a child problem and sexual abuse of a child problem. These are a few of the 374 mental disorders that are listed in the American Psychiatric Association's Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders or in the Mental Disorders section of the World Health Organization's International Classification of Diseases. DSM is the diagnostic tool. It is the Bible of the mental health profession. Whenever a psychiatric opinion is sought or offered, the DSM or the World Health ICD are presented and increasingly accepted as the final word on sanity, insanity, and so-called mental illness. Canadian psychologist Tana Dean reports, unlike medical diagnoses that convey a probable cause, appropriate treatment, and likely prognosis, the disorders listed in DSM-4, as well as ICD, 10 are terms arrived at through peer consensus, literally a vote by APA committee members and designed largely for billing purposes. The science by vote procedure is as surprising to a layperson as it is to other health professionals who have witnessed DSM voting meetings. Quote, mental disorders are established without scientific basis and procedure. A psychologist attending the DSM hearing said, the low level of intellectual effort was shocking. Diagnoses were developed by majority vote on the level we use to choose a restaurant. Then it's typed into a computer. It may reflect our naivete, but it was our belief that there would be an attempt to look at things scientifically. In 1987, a self-defeating personality disorder was voted in as a provisional label used to describe self-sacrificing people, especially women, who supposedly choose careers or relationships that are likely to cause disappointment. The disorder met with such protest from women it was subsequently voted out of DSM-4. Lynn Rosewater, a psychologist who attended a DSM hearing presided over by one of the manual's leading architects, psychiatrist Robert Spitzer, reported, quote, they were having a discussion for a criterion about masochistic personality disorder and Bob Spitzer's wife, a social worker, and the only woman in that meeting on Spitzer's side of the debate says, I do that sometimes. And he says, okay, take it out. You watch this and you say, wait a second, we don't have a right to criticize them because this is science? Dr. Margaret Hagen psychologist and author of Whores of the Court, The Fraud of Psychiatric Testimony and the Rape of American Justice, is blunt about the real motive that lies behind the DSM voting system. If you can't come up with the diagnosis, you can't send a bill. According to Professors Herb Kutchins and Stuart Kirk, authors of Making Us Crazy, Far too often, the psychiatric Bible has been making us crazy when we are just human. The bitter medicine is that DSM 
has attempted to medicalize too many human troubles. Kutchins and Kirk further state that people, quote, may gain false comfort from a diagnostic psychiatric manual that encourages belief in the illusion that the harshness, brutality, and pain in their lives and in their communities can be explained by a psychiatric label and eradicated by a pill. In June 2004, John Reed, senior lecturer in psychology at Auckland University, New Zealand, wrote, more and more problems have been redefined as disorders or illnesses supposedly caused by genetic predispositions and biochemical imbalances. Life events are relegated to mere triggers of an underlying biological time bomb. Feeling very sad has become depressive disorder. Worrying too much? Anxiety disorder. Excessive gambling, drinking, drug use, or eating are also illnesses. So are eating, sleeping, or having sex too little, being painfully shy, has become avoidant personality disorder. Beating people up is intermittent explosive disorder. Our Diagnostic Statistical Manual of Mental Disorders has 886 pages of such illnesses, making lists of behaviors, applying medical-sounding labels to people who engage in them, then using the presence of those behaviors to prove they have the illness in question is scientifically meaningless. It tells us nothing about causes or solutions. It does, however, create the reassuring feeling that something medical is going on. DSM has become so widely relied upon within society that it has taken on the aura of scientific fact. Millions now use and believe in its diagnostic abilities, never once suspecting that the whole premise and the system itself are fraudulent. These people are at risk of making seriously wrong, even fatal, turns in either their own lives or the lives of others. Psychiatry makes unproven claims that depression, bipolar illness, anxiety, alcoholism, and a host of other disorders are in fact primarily biologic and probably genetic in origin. This kind of faith in science and progress is staggering, not to mention naive and perhaps delusional. Dr. David Kaiser, psychiatrist. All psychiatrists, when they are caught on camera or on microphone, cower and admit that there are no such things as chemical imbalances, diseases or examinations or tests for them. What they do in practice? Lying in every instance, abrogating the informed consent right of every patient, and poisoning them in the name of treatment is nothing short of criminal. Dr. Fred Bauman, pediatric neurologist. There are no objective tests in psychiatry, no x-ray, laboratory or exam finding that says definitively that someone does or does not have a mental disorder. There is no definition of a mental disorder. It's bull. You just can't define it. Alan Francis, former DSM-4 Task Force Chairman. If you tell a lie big enough and keep repeating it, people will eventually believe it. Yosef Goebbels, Nazi Minister of Propaganda.